Bank. I'm Rachel. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Stocks in Action show. Let us have a look at the ASX 200 and the ASX listed stocks that are trending today. The S&P ASX 200 is up today, gaining 18.8 points or 2.26% to 7,134 and crossing above its 20-day moving average. The top performing stocks in the index are ASL, ALS sorry, up 8.35% and YSA Global up 4.91%. Over the past five days, the index has gained 2.92% and is currently 0.54% off its 52-week high. Seven of 11 sectors are higher today. The information technology sector is the best performing sector so far today, gaining 2.32% and 8.96% for the last five days. On that note, let us look at a few key global and domestic developments. March quarter witnesses increased construction work. That's according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics from their latest release today. The seasonally adjusted estimate for total construction work done rose 2.4% to 51,975.9 million dollars in the March quarter. Building work rose 2.5% to 30,191.8 million dollars. Engineering work done arose 2.2% to $21,784.1 million. Australia's Metals and Mining Index, the AXMM, has slid as much as 1.2%. That's making it the top drag on the benchmark. Iron ore prices have been under pressure lately as top metals consumer China vowed to strengthen price controls of key materials over the next five years, and that includes iron ore. Spot iron ore prices in China hit a record high of $232.50 per tonne last week, but have paired gains to trade around $192.50 a tonne. Mining titan BHB Group tumbled 2.3% to hit a five-week low, while rival Rio Tinto eased 2%. The world's fourth biggest iron ore miner, Fortescue Metals, shed 2.1%. The S&P ASX 300 Metals and Mining is headed for a third consecutive weekly loss, but had gained 8% so far this year as of the last close. Energy stocks are expected to trade on a muted note on Wednesday as traders await developments on the Iranian sanctions. Crude oil prices inched higher on Tuesday on the back of increased demand from the Northern Hemisphere driving season and also the easing of COVID-19 lockdowns globally. August delivery of Brent oil futures traded almost flat at $68.41 US cents a barrel, whereas WTI crude oil futures traded 0.24% down at $65.91 US cents a barrel. That was of the 26th of May 2021 at 3 minutes past 10 this morning, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Moving on to the U.S. now, U.S. President Joe Biden has now decided to get their bulk battery metal supply from their partner countries, ditching his plan to rely on domestically sourced metals. The president decided to focus on the domestic mineral processing sector rather than increasing investment in the mining sector, a decision that's hoped to reduce the country's carbon footprints. This significant decision is backed by Biden's last autumn campaign, signaling a low carbon intensive economy. The initiative would create more job opportunities in the metal processing sector and increase the supply of processed minerals to manufacture electric vehicles. The US will hopefully now rely on Brazil, Australia and Canada for their supply of battery metals. The initiative will also help the country develop the complete supply chain from metals to batteries. The initiative would also help reduce China's monopoly and limit the United States' reliance on the industry leader, that is China. Well, on that note, let's have a look at some other news coming from ASX-listed companies now from across all sectors. But before I do take you through the ASX listed stocks, it's time now for a very short break. Please stay tuned. I'll be back in a very short while.
At Calkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV. Hello, welcome back. I'm Rachel. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Stocks in Action show. Let us quickly have a look at the ASX listed stocks that are trending today. The shares of lab testing company ALS gained as much as 7.43% to $11.71 on Monday. That was at 10.30 this morning, Australian Eastern Standard Time. The stock is a top percentage gainer on benchmark AXJO, which is down 0.2%. The company stated financial year net attributable profit surged 35.1% to $172.6 million as losses from impairment were offset by proceeds from China asset sale. The company has declared a final dividend of 14.6 cents per share, more than double from a year earlier. The EBITDA margin expanded across all three divisions during the period due to strong cost management in the face of COVID-19 headwinds. Moving on now, the share price of Mosaic Brands gained as much as 21.74% to 70 cents on Wednesday at 10.40 this morning, Australian Eastern Standard Time. The women's fashion retailer now expects a full year underlying EBITDA of around $48 million in financial year 2021 that's helped partly by growth of online sales. The group expects to achieve comparable sales growth in the next financial year, which will result in financial year underlying EBITDA of around $50 million in the financial year 2022. The retail firm stated that it expects synergies from the acquisition of clothing and homewares retailers EasyBuy to be in the range of $3 million New Zealand dollars to $5 million New Zealand dollars on an annual run rate. Meanwhile, this ASX listed stock is in the news today. WA Kaolin has signed a 15 year contract with one of Western Australia's leading energy solution providers, Clean Energy Fuels Australia. The agreement provides for the storage and revaporization infrastructure, including delivery of liquefied natural gas by a virtual pipeline. The contract is valued at $22 million and supply will be used by the Wikipin Kaolin project. The contract includes the supply of commissioning gas from the 1st of September 2021 to the end of 2021. It will start on the 1st of January 2022 and run for 15 years. Intermediate reviews at year 5 and year 10 are scheduled. The agreement also provides two extension options for five years. Now moving on to the next big news, the share price of medical equipment maker MicroX has gained 15.6% so far today to 37 cents. That's its biggest intraday percentage gain since the 1st of March. The company shared that it has received approval for its Rover bedside imager by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The company will start marketing the Rover immediately in the U.S. and in other global markets that will accept the FDA approval. Meanwhile, technology company revolutionizing smart car technology Connection at Telematics shared the news of the commercial launch of its original equipment manufacturer, agnostic software platform that's called CXZTRAC. This is a highly scalable mobility platform that supports any branded vehicle for both courtesy transportation programs and non-compulsory third-party insurance use by dealers and original equipment manufacturers. Well, before I take you through more ASX listed stocks, it's time for a short break. Please stay tuned. I'll be back in a very short while. At Calkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. 
We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV. Hello and welcome back. I'm Rachel and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Stocks in Action show. Let's now have a look at the ASX listed stocks that are trending today. Financial research firm Citi has retained a buy rating on glove maker Ansel and says the risk to financial year 2021 earnings remains to the upside. The broker says the prices of personal protective equipment are still rising, but demand in 2022 will be lower as the vaccination program for coronavirus is rolled out globally. Citi has forecasted their financial year 2023 revenue of $1,967 million, given the use of PPE will likely remain slightly elevated and the assumption that company takes some market share over time. Citi also stated that at some point in the next year, pricing will be under pressure as growth in demand slows or declines. According to data company Refinitiv, six of eight analysts rate the stock as a buy or higher. Two rate it as a hold. Their median price target is $46.66 a share for Ansel. Moving on to the next big news now. Ketone Dairy Corporation has launched a new propriety product drinks range called Tonic Energy in Australia and New Zealand. The company's existing proprietary brand Tonic has been well received across those countries, so they launched a new range of products available in three new flavours. The first production run has been completely pre-sold to Brackenberry Nutrition and Nutrition Systems, according to the company's release. The first production run totaled approximately $100,000 in sales, and the second run will be delivered to distributors in July 2021. Moving on to another company, Etherstack PLC's Australian unit Aurora Wireless has signed its debut contract with the Australian Department of Home Affairs. The contract is worth $515,000, with contract revenue to be fully recognised in the current financial year ending 31st of December 2021. Management foresees additional revenues in future periods. Now, the total value of contracts with the Commonwealth is $5 million. This is the sixth contract awarded by federal departments in Australia, in Canada and the United States in the last 12 months. Now, before I take you through some more ASX listed stocks, it's time for a short break. Stay tuned. I'll be back in a moment. At Calkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV. Hi, welcome back. I'm Rachel. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Stocks in Action show. Let's have a look at the ASX listed stocks that are trending today. Mako Gold has received the assay results for a further 19 reverse circulation drill holes from ongoing drilling at their Changa project in the company's flagship Napai project in the Ivory Coast. The new drilling in the south of the Tango Prospect intersected multiple shallow high-grade zones. This extends the strike length of Load 1 by 200 metres from the previous drilling. And the zone is open to the southwest and at depth. The new drilling has also increased the total north-south strike length of the Tangier Prospects to 1.8 kilometres. 
Meanwhile, this ASX listed stock is in the news today, Netcentric. Their subsidiary, Nufnang Live Commerce, has become an exclusive technology payment and fulfillment partner to eShop Live. Now, eShop Live is a leading social live commerce platform based in Malaysia. The contract is for an initial period of three years. They will earn volume-based and transaction-based fees from eShop Live for technology and payment gateway usage, also for warehousing and fulfillment of orders. Nufnang will acquire 5% interest in Innovatic Commerce Solution. That's the owner of eShop Live for $490,000 funded from existing cash reserves. Okay, then that's all for now. Stay tuned with Kalkine TV for more live market updates. We'll be back with more news on the markets, economy, diverse themes and sectors very soon. I'm Rachel signing off for Kalkine TV.